The famous phrase, Houston, we have a problem, spoken by astronaut Jack Swigert in April 1970, became a landmark in the history of space exploration. This iconic moment occurred during the Apollo 13 mission, which aimed to return to the moon, a feat already accomplished by the previous Apollo 11 and Apollo 12 missions. However, what unfolded from that moment transformed not only the trajectory of the mission, but also the future of space exploration. In the 1960s, the world was immersed in the Cold War, an intense competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. This scenario fueled a space race that resulted in extraordinary achievements, such as sending the first man into space, Yuri Gagarin, and the conquest of the moon. The Apollo program was established as a response to the Soviet challenge, with an ambitious goal to land humans on the lunar surface and bring them back to Earth safely. The Apollo program reached its peak in 1969 with the Apollo 11 mission, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first men to walk on the moon. Armstrong famously declared, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind as he stepped onto the lunar surface. Apollo 12 followed with equal success, but with these triumphs, public interest began to wane. NASA faced challenges justifying ongoing investment in the program, especially as popular enthusiasm decreased reflected in the audience numbers for live broadcasts. The viewership for Apollo 13 did not reach 10% of what was observed for Apollo 11, raising concerns for the agency. Apollo 13 was planned as a continuation of lunar exploration, intending to conduct scientific experiments and collect samples in an area called Fra Mauro, which had significant geological interest. This area was targeted for study due to its unique formation which could help understand the history of the moon and, consequently, the solar system. The Saturn V rocket, which remains one of the largest and most powerful ever built, was prepared for launch. Standing about 110 meters tall, the Saturn V was a true engineering marvel, capable of carrying the crew and their equipment to the moon. The Apollo 13 crew consisted of myself, Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert. I was the commander having previously flown on Apollo 8. Apollo 13 was set to be a scientific exploration mission, aiming to conduct geological experiments and collect samples in Framaro. The launch took place on April 11, 1970, but problems arose quickly. The mission was already marked by unforeseen events, such as the replacement of pilot Ken Mattingly, who was sidelined due to exposure to a contagious disease, leading Jack Swigert to take his place. Interestingly, Mattingly did not contract the illness and later flew on Apollo 16. Three days after launch, the mission entered a new phase of tension when, at the request of mission control, Swigert activated the oxygen tank fans. This action triggered a catastrophic explosion that severely damaged the spacecraft and interrupted the mission. The pressure readings from the oxygen tanks indicated that one was lost, and the situation quickly became critical. The explosion resulted from a combination of design flaws and inadequate testing practices. The oxygen tank, which had been damaged during a voltage swap in a previous mission, contained poorly insulated wires that led to a short circuit and consequently the explosion. This prompted NASA to conduct a thorough investigation, which later revealed that the oxygen tank involved in the explosion had been present on Apollo 10 and was dropped during maintenance, causing internal damage that went undetected. With the explosion, Apollo 13 transformed from a lunar exploration mission into a desperate fight for survival. The astronauts were forced to use the lunar module as a lifeboat, a strategy that had been discussed but never tested in real situations. The challenge intensified as the lunar module was designed to accommodate only two astronauts, while three were aboard. All we had was a piece of paper and a pencil. The astronauts not only had to deal with psychological pressure, but also with the scarcity of vital resources, such as oxygen and water. Meanwhile, on Earth, a team of engineers led by Gene Kranz worked tirelessly to find solutions. Kranz was known for his famous phrase, failure is not an option, which became a motto among the mission control team members. Constant communication between the astronauts and mission control was crucial for formulating strategies. One of the critical challenges was removing excess carbon dioxide from the confined environment of the lunar module. With limited resources, the team in Houston instructed the astronauts to improvise, 
using materials available on board to create a system that would allow for CO2 removal. The engineers in Houston were able to devise a solution using a combination of parts from different systems, and the use of duct tape became emblematic of the team's ingenuity. These improvised solutions became famous and exemplified the human spirit in the face of adversity. The use of duct tape tubing from other systems and creativity were essential to ensuring the astronauts' survival. What became known as the Apollo 13 engineering project demonstrated that even under extreme pressure, human creativity can find solutions to the most challenging problems. After many discussions and calculations, it was decided that the spacecraft would use the moon's gravity to help return to Earth. This required an adjustment to the original trajectory, which now needed to circle the natural satellite instead of landing on it. This method, known as gravitational assist, is a technique still used in contemporary space missions and was crucial for optimizing the remaining fuel usage. This method had been used in other missions before, but never in an emergency situation like Apollo 13. The return, however, brought new challenges. With the loss of an oxygen tank, the astronauts had to carefully ration water and manage the cabin temperature, which was plummeting drastically. They faced severe conditions, including extreme cold and humidity, as they worked to maintain communication with mission control and follow instructions for re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. The environment in the module became so humid that water condensed on surfaces, and the astronauts had to adapt to these adverse conditions. The mission team also faced the threat of rising carbon dioxide levels, which could jeopardize the astronauts' health. After days of tension and uncertainty, Apollo 13 successfully re-entered the atmosphere, landing in the Pacific Ocean on April 17, 1970. The recovery was made by the rescue ship USS Iwo Jima, which was prepared to intercept the capsule at sea. Although the original lunar landing mission was not accomplished, what followed was one of the most watched missions in the history of space exploration, with millions tuning in to follow the rescue. Apollo 13 not only saved the lives of three astronauts, but also reignited public interest in space exploration. However, the mission had significant repercussions for the future of space travel. Subsequent investigations revealed failures in safety systems, leading to crucial changes in oxygen tanks and NASA's operational practices. The accident resulted in a re-evaluation of many safety protocols and the implementation of new regulations to ensure the safety of future missions. NASA made significant improvements in spacecraft safety, including the implementation of redundant systems and more rigorous testing. The Apollo 13 accident served as a wake-up call about the inherent risks of space exploration. The lessons learned from this mission led to a complete overhaul of safety protocols and the development of more advanced technologies. Although Apollo 14 successfully landed on the moon, public enthusiasm waned and lunar exploration was relegated to a distant plan making way for other priorities in the following decades. The decline in public interest and the rising costs of space missions led to reduced government funding for NASA, resulting in the cancellation of the final Apollo program missions. The last mission, Apollo 17, occurred in 1972, marking the end of NASA's lunar program. The legacy of Apollo 13 endures not only as a story of survival and bravery, but also as a testament to what human ingenuity can achieve in the face of adversity. The mission demonstrated the importance of collaboration between astronauts and engineers on Earth, emphasizing that space exploration is both a physical journey and a collective achievement. Apollo 13 also inspired films, documentaries, and books, including the acclaimed movie Apollo 13, directed by Ron Howard, which helped revive public interest in space exploration. Today, NASA and other space agencies are preparing for new missions to the moon and beyond with the Artemis program. This project aims to establish a sustainable presence on the moon, paving the way for future explorations of Mars and other celestial bodies. The experiences of Apollo 13, both in terms of technology and crisis management, have shaped how these new missions are planned and executed, highlighting the importance of resilience and innovation. The story of Apollo 13 is a powerful reminder that space exploration is a continuous quest filled with challenges and opportunities and that even in the face of uncertainty, the human spirit can find a way. So as we look to the future and dream of new destinations, we must always remember the lessons of the past, for they guide us on our journey into the unknown. 
Every step taken in space exploration reflects the courage, creativity, and collaboration that define the human experience. With new technological advancements and international cooperation initiatives, such as the International Space Station, the future of space exploration promises to be as thrilling as the heroic feats of Apollo 13. Now, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Apollo 13 and its lessons for space exploration? Are you inspired by stories of overcoming adversity and innovation in times of crisis? Share your ideas and reflections in the comments. Let's continue this conversation about how space exploration shapes our understanding of the universe and ourselves.